to the green cards, shall we, kids? Let's start things off with Briar Bridge Patrol. One green, three colorless, three three human warrior. Whenever Briar Bridge Patrol deals damage to a player, sorry, whenever Briar Bridge Patrol deals damage to one or more creatures, investigate. At the beginning of each end step, if you sacrifice three or more clues this turn, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's a hill giant for starters. Deals damage to it one or more creatures. So only to creatures do you get to investigate. Um, at the beginning of each end step, if you sacrifice three or more clues this turn, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So that's very expensive. Not only do you have to have three clues, but you also have to have paid six mana that turn uh, on sacrificing clues. Uh, I mean, it's generally going to generate at least one clue, I would say. In conjunction with like combat tricks, it's probably fine, but I don't think this card is going to be that impressive. There, there are going to be some decks that, uh, that clues are their thing, and I think this card is, is fine in that deck, but it, it's, it's not that good. I'm going to give it a 2.5, honestly. Um, you're going to always play it in your green decks but it's not anything amazing. So 2.5 for Briar Bridge Patrol. It is getting very hot. I'm going to go open a window. <clears throat> okay. No, it, it's perfectly fine. Again, 2.5 is, is fine. It's not amazing. Clip Wings. One green, one colorless. Instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. I think generally this is probably going to be a sideboard card, but I can see main decking it for sure uh, if you don't have good answers to flyers. Remember, this is the opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. So if they have multiple creatures with flying, um, you're not going to get the creature that you want to get generally. But, uh, you know, it's, it's still okay in the green decks. Uh, again, generally I think I'm going to sideboard this. Maybe you main deck it. This is probably close to a 1.5. Uh, it's it's definitely not unplayable. The instant speed makes it fine, uh, and you know with discard outlets, if it's a dead card, you just pitch it away. But again, the opponent gets to choose. Um, sometimes this will kill a flame blade angel. Sometimes it'll just kill a one one spirit. Uh, very variable, but uh, not unplayable. One point five for clip wings. Crawling Sensation. One green, two colorless enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. You may. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token onto the battlefield. This is good at enabling Delirium. You get some random value while you're doing it. There aren't too many other ways to to put lands into your graveyard from the ba uh, from from your library though I think this card is not going to be good uh, it does nothing immediately it might not do anything even the turn after sure you get two cards in the bin but it's it's just not impressive standalone blech I'm gonna give this a 1.0 I think this card is poop soup Oh, sorry. Whenever one or more land cards are put from, into your graveyard from anywhere. Okay, so you can discard land. Uh, okay, 1.5. 1.5. You can discard land. And this is still quite bad. I think I'm still leaning closer to 1.0 than 1.5, honestly. I don't think this card is good. You can prove me wrong, though. Cult of the Waxing Moon. One red... Sorry, one green for colorless. For a 5-4, Human Shaman. Those are some huge shamans. Or huge humans. Whenever a permanent you control transforms into a non-human creature, put a 2-2 green wolf creature token on the battlefield. So 5 mana for a 5-4, already fine stats and limited, honestly. Uh, and in the transform werewolf deck, this goes way, way up. Whenever a permanent you control transforms into a non-human, so it doesn't have to be a werewolf creature, right? You can just... As long as it's transforming into a non-human, you get some extra value out of this. And it's already attached to a huge body. This card is potentially splashable in a pinch. I think this card is actually quite decent. Uh, I'm happy to give this a 3.0. Happy to give this a 3.0. It's big. Huge upside. Splashable. Easy cast. Feels good, man. Not bad.
Not bad. I'm going to give 3.0 Cult of the Waxing Moon. Equestrian Skill. One green, three colors for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature gets plus 3, plus 3. As long as enchanted creature is a human, it has Trample. I mean, this is just asking to get two for one, but plus three plus three is a huge stat boost. I generally err on the side of not playing these cards uh, because of the blowout potential, but hey, if, if, if that creature goes unanswered, it's going to win the game very, very quickly. I'm not going to give it a 1.0. I'm going to give it a 1.5. Maybe, no, two, two's too good, or two's too high, but 1.5 I think is perfectly fine for the equestrian skill. If this costs 3 mana, then I think I'd, I'd definitely give it a 1.5. Uh, but it being so expensive is also a huge drawback of the card. I don't know why my nose is so itchy right now. Ah, Itchy! Anyway. Gloom Widow. 1 green, 2 colors for a 3 3 spider. It has reach, but Gloom Widow can block only creatures with flying. Uh, don't underestimate this card. 3 mana 3 threes are decent. The reach is actually really relevant. Uh, you know, green doesn't often have good ways to deal with flying creatures, and this, this creature can do so. It's not going to block ground creatures, but it's just very, very solid. It is a reprint, if you guys remember from, I think... Okay, I don't remember what set it was reprinted from. Uh, Avacyn Restored and something else. Something like that. But uh, this card, it does work. Don't underestimate it. It's an, a big early beater. And it's a spider, so that gives it extra benefit. Uh, I'm happily going to give this a 2.5. You're always going to play it in your green decks. Uh, probably even multiples if you can. It's not a huge, or a really, a really high pick in draft, but uh, it does work. It does work. Next card. This is a reprint from... Arcadian Masks? Or Masks Block, I think. One green, Groundskeeper. 1-1, one, one, Human Druid, you may pay a green and a colorless, return target basic land card from your graveyard to your hand. In the right deck, this card is going to be great. In every other deck, this card is going to be Poop Soup. Uh, so, it is definitely not unplayable, but you need to have the right deck to really abuse this. But when you do abuse this, it is going to be nice. It is going to be real nice. Uh, just because of that fact, I'm going to give it a 1.0, but it has to be in the right deck. Otherwise, you're not playing a 1-mana 1-1. One one. Um, it just has a lot of synergy potential in the correct deck. So 1.5 Grounds Keeper. Inexorable Blob. I actually have never seen this card. 1 green, 2 colors, 3-3 three, three ooze. So fine stats alone. That Like, 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, I would just give it a 2.5. In the middle. 3-mana 3-3, three, three, 2.5. Delirium. Whenever it attacks... If there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, put a 3-3 green ooze creature token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. <gasps> Damn. That's scary. The problem is, by the time you have Delirium, your opponents are probably going to have creatures that are bigger than 3-3, but if you combine this with any combat tricks, it takes over the game real quickly, and you can easily swarm, uh, swarm out with this card. Jeez. And again, it's it's already a 2.5 just by being a 3-3 three, three for 3. I'm going to give this card a 3.5, maybe even a 4. This card is very scary. Um, left uncheck, it just wins the game, assuming you have Delirium. And again, it's already a 3-3 three, three for 3, so it's perfectly playable in the green decks. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to give it a 3.3, and we'll, sorry, 3.5, and we will move on. Next we have Kessig Dire Swine. Two greens, four colorless for a 6-6 six, six boar horror. Delirium has trample as long as you have delirium. Okay. Uh, six mana, six, six unlimited. It's it's kind of fillerish, yes, but if you need a top end card, this is a fine one, and with delirium, trample is a huge boon to it. Uh, it's definitely not unplayable. It's just not very exciting. I'm gonna give this a 2.0, and we will continue to move on. Kessig Dire Swine, 2.0. Might beyond reason. One green, three colorless, instant. Put two plus one one counters on target creature. Delirium, put three one one counters on that creature instead. 
Uh, I was never a huge fan of Dragon Scale Boon, and that untapped the creature, but as far as combat tricks goes, this is fine because it, it, it stays. And there are synergies. Uh, wait, are there synergies with plus one plus one counters? I can't even remember now. I don't even remember if there are synergies with plus, plus one plus one counters. Uh, but again, as far as combat tricks goes, this is fine because it's permanent. And with Delirium, it actually is not bad. Um, it's not great, but I can definitely see running this card. I'm going to give it a 2.0. I'm going to give it a 2.0. We'll go on to the next one. Might be on reason though, 2.0. Next card is Moonlight Hunt. One green, one colorless. Instant. Choose target creature. You don't control. Each creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf deals damage equal to its power to that creature. This card is insane in the wolf deck. Or, uh, or werewolf deck. If you're a red green, this is a very, very high pickup. It's basically just a green colorless instant destroy target creature a lot of the time. <clears throat> um, in non-wolf werewolf decks, this card is unplayable, but sometimes you'll still have a wolf. Um, again, this, this card is entirely fringe based on the deck. It's kind of like Moonmist, right? In that aspect. Um, so basically it's a 1.0 Unless you're playing the wolf or werewolf, then it turns into like a 3 or a 3.5. Uh, rather, wolf or werewolf deck. In the correct deck, this is going to be a high pickup. In uh, every other deck, this is just chaff. So, take it, play it based on the deck you have or you're building. Speaking of wolves, I love this card. Pack Guardian, 2 green, 2 colorless, 4 3, wolf spirit, flash. That's pretty good. Just standalone, two green, two colors for a 4 3 flash. I would probably rate that at three. When it enters the battlefield, you may discard a land card. If you do, put a 2 2 green wolf creature token onto the battlefield. Wow! So you're discarding a land, and you have a 4 3 and a 2 2, both at instant speed. That's pretty solid. As far as green cards go, this is one of the higher power level ones. Uh, you're not going to find many better green uncommons than this. Uh, it packs a punch, it brings a friend, it's, it's flashable. I think this card is real good. The double green is a bit of a hindrance, but if you're playing green, this is, this is way up there, man. I'm going to give it a 4.0. I think this card is just all value. This card is just all value. So, Pack Guardian, going to happily give it a 4.0, and we will move on to the next card which is Rabbit Bite. One green, one color sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So it's a Savage Punch without Ferocious. And Savage Punch was pretty decent. Um, as far as green removal is concerned, yes, you can get blown out if they kill your creature, uh, but otherwise it's just going to be a very solid card. I probably take this pretty highly in draft, um, and you're always happily going to run this in seal. This is probably a 3 or a 3.5. It's just very solid. Sometimes your creature's gonna be smaller, so it's gonna be a little bit awkward, but uh, generally speaking, we're always happy to play this card. And in fact, you're probably going to run multiples. Uh, I'm gonna settle on a 3.0 for Rabid Bite. <clears throat> Seasons of the Past. Two green, four colorless, sorcery. Uh-oh. Return any number of cards with different convert mana costs from your graveyard to your hand. Put Seasons Past on the bottom of its owner's library. I'm probably going to try to run this in sealed. It's probably decent in sealed. Uh, in draft? Who knows? This this card can have some some real good utility. I don't think this is bad. I don't think it's great. I just don't think it's bad. So you can, you can return like a 1 mana spell, a 2 mana spell, a 3 mana spell, a 4 mana spell, a 5 mana spell to your hand. Or, you know, you can return, like, a 2-mana spell, 4-mana spell, 5-mana spell, something like that. I think I'm going to give this a 2.5. I think it's perfectly playable. Um, it just has so much value potential on it. Uh, I, I see this frequently just returning 2 cards, maybe 3. Oh, and a land. And a land, right. Hmm. 
yeah, it's it's probably not bad. It's six mana. It's slow, but I, it has a lot of high upside. Uh, I'm gonna get two point five. Again, I think you're always going to play this in your green decks. I'm not going to take it super highly, and it's not like a bomb or anything, but it's just value. Value. Moving on. Silver Fur Partisan. One green, two colors for 2-2 two -two Trample, Wolf Warrior. Eh. Whenever a wolf or werewolf you control becomes a target of an instant or sorcery spell, put a 2-2 two -two green wolf creature token onto the battlefield. Eh. How many combat tricks do you expect to run? Or rather, how many instants or sorceries that can target creatures you control do you expect to run? I think this card is probably going to be way overrated. <clears throat> there are tricks, for sure, and this probably has a very high target on it. Uh, like, if you play this, your opponent is going to generally try to kill it very quickly just because of the potential upside. But generally, I don't think you're going to find this card to be that great. Uh, if, you do get it, if you do get any value, then yes, it's good. But generally speaking, I don't think it's going to be that good. It's it's perfectly playable, just as a, like a lightning rod for removal. But I'm not going to give it a high, very high rating. I think yeah, 2.5 is perfectly reasonable. Perfectly perfectly reasonable. You can't be two for one. That's true, uh, in the sense that they cannot use an instant or sorcery spell on it. But I think more frequently than not, this is just going to die in combat. If you do have a trick, hey, it's great. Uh, but uh, there aren't that many playable tricks that you're going to want to be running, and so I think 2.5 is is perfectly fine. Stoic Builder, one green, two colors for a two three human. When Stoic Builder enters the battlefield, you may return target land card from your graveyard to your hand. So two three for three, human. Uh, there are some human synergies though, not many, uh, and you can return a land from your graveyard to your hand. This card's fine. It's not great. It's fine. Uh, in the right deck, it's going to be obviously decent, but uh, overall, it's just playable, not amazing, does some work sometimes. Uh, I'm going to give Stoic Builder also a 2.5. Honestly, I, I think it's like the same power level as the Wolf. That's probably not correct. I guess if I'm giving this a 2.5, the Wolf should probably be a 3.0, but um, I think the Wolf is overhyped. Alright, next card. Tireless Tracker. Now this is a card I can get behind. One green, two colorless, three two human scout. So base stats alone, three two for three. Fine, fine. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. What? <coughs> <coughs> Note to self, do not make sound effects while you're sick. Uh, yeah, so you just get value just by playing lands with this card. And then, furthermore, Whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Tireless Tracker. Damn! This card is great. Uh, I think I would generally... No, I, I like you just jam this on turn 3, then following turn, uh, you get a clue if you play a land, and then you can turn it into a 4-3. Like, this card is just absurd left unchecked. Absurd just left unchecked. Um, I think this is a very high pick in draft. I think this is definitely great and sealed because remember you're you're putting clues onto the battlefield, so you get to you get to draw cards too. This card is like a 4.0 minimum. Minimum. Uh, it's cheap. It takes over the game if left unchecked. It draws you cards. Tireless Tracker is great, just great. Next card, Ovenwald Hydra, two green, four colorless for a star star Hydra with reach. Why do they keep giving these Hydras reach? Uh, the Hydras' power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. And when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. So it doesn't have to be a basic land. Uh, you can get any land. And generally speaking, in limited, when you cast this, it's going to be at least a 7-7. Seven, seven. This is definitely a bomb in limited. The problem is it doesn't have trample. But it's going to be like a abyss every turn, and it blocks flyers very, very well. Uh, I'm happy to give this a 4.0 as well. Honestly, I think it's the same power level as the Tireless Tracker. Maybe even a little bit worse, because I think the Tireless Tracker, uh, it comes down earlier. It can still win the game very easily, and it cycles you car or draws you more cards, whereas the Hydra is just a huge fatty. So, not amazing, but definitely a good card. 4.0 for the Hydra. Vessel of Nascency, one green, 
enchantment. Green in the colors, sacrifice it, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker card from among them in your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. This is a great way to help enable delirium. Um, but I'm not going to be too thrilled with running this card. It's, it's going to be perfectly fine. Like, it cycles itself almost assured. I don't know. You can whiff. You can whiff if you hit nothing but sorceries and instants, I guess. But generally, you're going to find something to, to replace this with. And again, it's, a, it's an easy way to get multiple card types into your graveyard. So it's not unplayable. It's just not great. I'm going to give this like a 1.5, maybe a 2 very tops. Vessel of Nascency, I think I'm going to settle on a 1.5 for it. Uh, next card, we have Watcher in the Web. One green, four colorless for 2-5 reach Spida. Watcher in the Web can block an additional seven creatures each combat. An additional seven creatures. So yes, this can block eight creatures total. Uh, flavor, yeah, spiders have eight legs. This one apparently has eight eyes. A 2-5 reach is huge in this format. It's, it's very hard to get through this card, creature-wise alone, one for one. Uh, you're going to need some trick, or you're going to need some removal spell. I think this card is good in the green decks, and... Uh, probably splashable sometimes, honestly. I'm happy to give this a 3.0. Like, you're always happy to run these type of cards in your green decks. So, watch from the web, 3.0. Okay, we are halfway done with the green cards. Let's go to our second half. And start with aim high. <clears throat> one green, one colorless. Instant, untapped target creature. It gets plus two, plus two, and gains reach until end of turn. You guys remember Vines of the Recluse? Well, this is basically a bigger Vines of the Recluse. Um... It doesn't untap the creature? No, it does untap the creature, though. Yeah, this is a great green trick. Uh, I expect to get blown out by, by it a lot. You don't always have to untap the creature. You can just use it for plus two, plus two. As far as green tricks are concerned, uh, I think I rate this one very highly. I'm going to give it a 2.5. 2.5. And that's like the top you're ever going to get for a combat trick. Unless it's like epic proportions type trick. That's probably too high, but I'm going to leave it with a 2.5 for aim high. God damn it, my nose itches so bad! Bryway Courier. One green, two colors for a 3 2. Human Scout. When it dies, investigate. Like I said, three mana for a 3 2. Already fine, perfect stats in limited. Uh, and this one, when it dies, you're basically going to get to cycle it. So, which puts this a little bit over the top, honestly, uh, as far as the commons are concerned. I'm happy to give this a 3.0. Just because it generally replaces itself. And it's a fine beater on curve. Uh, so I'm going to give it a Byway Courier 3.0. Next up we have Confront the Unknown, which is one green instant. Investigate, then target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each clue you control. So by itself, it is going to give a creature plus one plus one, uh, plus one plus one, and it's going to eventually cycle. That's not terrible. Uh, if the card read target creature gets plus one plus one, draw a card. That'd probably be too good, actually. One green cantrip. So it, it's <coughs> it's three mana until you're, you're able to cycle this, but this card's not terrible because of that fact. Um, if you didn't investigate, it would be stone unplayable, but I, I don't think this is complete garbage. I think you're going to find some places where it's not terrible. Uh, generally speaking, it's not good enough. I'm going to give it a 1.5 here, but again, don't count this out in your clue decks. Filler, generally, yes, but can definitely find a, a fine home. 1.5 for Confront the Unknown. One green, one colorless, Cryptolith Rite. Enchantment, creatures you control have tap. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. This is a cute card. In Limited, you're generally not going to want to run this ever at all. Um, yeah, there's just not much to say about this card. I'm going to give it a 1.0. There's probably going to be some times where you open this in like sealed and you try to build a really greedy deck or you open it in draft and you're just like YOLO, I'm going to go for it. But generally speaking, Cryptolith Rite, not a card I'm looking to pick. Uh, I'm going to give it a 1.0 and move on. <clears throat> 
Death Cap Cultivator, one green, one colorless for a 2-1 human druid. Tap to add black or green to your mana pool. Hey, that's not bad. Delirium! It gains Death Touch. So not only is this super good early as just a Goblin Piker uh, and a Ramper, it also gains Death Touch later in the game, which means it's frequently going to tr be trading up. Uh, this is just a very solid card. It's not a bomb or anything, but you're going to play this in every single green deck. And it's going to be perfectly acceptable. I'm happily give this a 3.5. Eh, probably a 3. Probably a 3. 3.5 is a little bit too generous, I think. 3.0 is, is more uh, encapsulating of this card. Again, you're never going to cut this from your green decks. And it's always just going to be perfectly solid. <clears throat> Fork in the road. One green, one colorless sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and reveal them. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Then shuffle your library. Uh... This card is okay. It's putting a sorcery and a land into your graveyard for delirium purposes. Uh, we have seen a few cards that benefit from putting a land into your graveyard from anywhere. And you're also getting a land of your choice. So if you need fixing, like this is a fine card in the green deck. It's not amazing. You're not taking it highly or anything like that, but it's perfectly playable. I'm happily going to give this a 2.0. It's, it's just perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Um, let me change the camera setting here. It'll look very dark. No, that didn't work. Contrast. No, that didn't work. Exposure. All right, that looks a little bit better. Anyways, fork in the road, 2.0. Moving right along, we have Graph Mole. I love this card. One green, two colorless, two four mole beast. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you gain three life. I think this card is just great. Um, three mana for a two four is already fine for limited as it stands, but. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you gain through life. I like, like this is just a real role player in that clue deck. Um, I don't know what else I can say about this. Again, 2-4 for 3 is already good and limited. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, you're gaining 3 life. This is one of the cards that's going to make the, the green clue deck work. I'm very, very happy to give this a 3.5. That is a very high rating. Yes, I know, but I think Graph Mole is actually a surprise card. Uh, it's going to be a sleeper. And uh, don't be surprised when you're trying to race your opponent and they're getting all these clues out and then they're like, Graph Mole, gain nine, and you're like, no, not like this. But then you're like, yeah, like this, because that just happened. 3.5 Graph Mole, probably a way too high rating, but hey, I like that card. <clears throat> Halpack Resurgence, one green, two colors, enchantment, flash. Each creature you control that's a wolf or a well wolf gains plus one, plus one, and has trample. Yeah, that's not bad. Again, deck dependent for sure. Uh, but in the werewolf or wolf deck, this is this is money. Uh, it's a combat trick. You flash it in, and the plus one plus one and trample is a really nice bonus. Um, generally, this is going to be a 1.0. Obviously, you're not going to want to play it if you have like one wolf or werewolf in your deck. But if you are on the werewolf deck, hey, 3.0, easy. Easy. So, really variable rating on this card, um, but that's because it only fits into one deck. So, depending on if you have that deck or not, take this card. Intrepid Provisioner, one green, three colors for a 3 3 human scout trample. When it enters the battlefield, another target human you control gets plus two, plus two on the turn. So it's an aggressive card, it's a hill giant by itself, and it has trample, which makes it a good target for combat tricks, and uh, you know, it can just run over small chumpers. Um, giving a human plus two plus two is perfectly fine, not amazing. Uh, again, it, it's more filler that can force through some damage. It's I'm going to give this like a 2.0. I'm not anything excited about this card, but it, it's fine. That's what it is. It's fine. Everything's fine. This card is fine. 2.0, Intrepid Provisioner. Loam Dryad, 1 green, 1 2, Dryad Horror. A lot of horrors in this deck, uh, set rather. Tap and untap creature, tap and tap and untap creature you control. Add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. I would need to be splashing something insane for me to want to run this card. Uh, standalone, it's kind of poopy. 
This is like a 1.5, honestly. Uh, you're not going to be very, very happy with this. Although, if you have, if you open up, where is that enchantment? If you open up uh, this one, the Cryptolith right, and you try to build some fun deck, and then you pick up all of the Loam Dryads. Actually, wait, never mind. Then Loam, Loam Dryads would just tap. Okay, never mind. This card is bad. 1.5, maybe Fringe. Uh, don't play it. Don't play it. Next card, Moldgraf Scavenger. One green, one colorless for a 0-4 Fungus. Delirium, it gets plus 3, plus 0. Oh. I actually think this card is fine in the slower green decks. Um, it, it comes down early, it blocks most things, and it turns into a 3-4 later in the game. Like, this card is going to be a huge nu uh, nuisance that turns into a relevant beater later on. I think this is happily a 2.5, honestly. Just decent. Decent. You will be surprised by this card, I will, I will say that. I'm going to give a 2.5 to the Moldgraf Scavenger. Here's another nice one. Obsessive Skinner. One green, one colorless for a 1-1 one, one human rogue. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. So kind of like the Timberland Ranger, if you guys remember that card. Delirium. And this is where this gets real spicy. Uh, Delirium, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Wow. So if you have Delirium, this card is insane because it is continuously pumps uh, your team in addition to already giving something plus one, plus one when it entered the battlefield. Like, you could just play this on turn two as a bear, uh, but then late game, it just continuously pumps your team. I think this is a real winner for the, for the green cards uh, as far as uncommons go. Uh, it's not insane or anything, but I'm going to give it a 3.0. It's not insane or anything, but I'm going to give it a 3.0. Give me that Skinner, baby. Quilled Wolf. One green, one colorless, two, two, wolf. Hey, relevant creature type, and it's a quote-unquote bear. But it's a wolf. You can pay a green, five colorless. Quilled Wolf gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. We've seen these type of creatures time and time again. Uh, bears that have pump abilities when you reach you know, a much higher amount of mana. Uh, this is nowhere as near as good as like a Dark Thicket Wolf, but Quilled Wolf is still going to be very, very relevant. Uh, it's an early beater, uh, and late game it turns into a decent win condition. Uh, this is definitely a card that you will happily play in all of your green decks. In, in fact, you will probably play as many of them as you can pick up. I'm going to happily give this a 2.5, maybe even a 3.0. It's just solid. You can't ask for more from a bear, really. Solid. 2.5 Quilled Wolf. Root out. One green, two colorless, sorcery, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Investigate. Sideboard. It's not unplayable. It's just more often than not, you're not going to want to main deck this. Um, you can kill opposing clues, which is not that value. Uh, you can kill some pesky enchantments. There are equipment in this set. Um, so there are targets for it, but... Generally, I don't think I would main deck this. Uh, it's a sideboard card, for sure. It does have scenarios, but again, it's not unplayable. Second Harvest. Two green, two colorless, instant. For each token you control, put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of that permanent. This, this card, man, you would have to have like the best token deck ever for this to really do ever do anything. Um... And you'd have to, what, you'd have to be in white for the tokens? Ugh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a 1.0. It's basically unplayable. Maybe if you're extremely lucky and have... Well, I don't even know if that would be lucky, but if you have, like, six of the white vessels and some of their token producers and, like, the land that produces a 1-1 that also transform into that huge demon. And even then, this card is still... Bad. Yeah. Don't play this in limited. Don't play that in limited. Next up, two green, two colors for a 3-3 three, three worm. It's called Soul Swallower. It has Trample and Delirium. If there are four more... So if you have Delirium, put three 1-1 one, one counters on it? Oh my god. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there, put three 1-1 one, one counters... Damn! 
So this is just perfectly fine on curve as a hill giant with trample. And then late game, this takes over right quick. Right quick. Holy crap. I, I didn't. I guess I didn't see this card before. Uh, this is easily 4.0 plus because it will single-handedly single-handedly win you the game, and it's just fine uh, on turn four. Yowza! Just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It keeps swallowing all those souls, man. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a 4.0. I'm gonna be happy to take this early in draft and uh, happily play it in sealed. Not bad. Not bad, man. Thornhide Wolves. One green, four colors for a 4-5 wolf. Perfectly acceptable. Relevant creature type. Uh, decent body size for the casting cost. Splashable in a pinch if you really need something fat. But hey, uh, it's always going to make your green decks. I'm going to give this a 2.5. 2.5 ball. I think, it's, I, think it's per I think it's perfectly fine. Traverse the Ulvenweld. One green sorcery, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. If you have delirium, instead search your library for a creature or land. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Eh, this is fine. This is fine. Uh, not amazing, but fine. It's not unplayable for sure, because early in the game it helps fix for your colors or helps get your land drops. Late in the game it finds whatever best creatures uh, le left. I'm always going to play this in my green deck. I'm not super happy about it, and I'm not going to take it early, but I think this card is perfectly fine. I'm going to traverse the Elven Wild 2.0. 2.0. Elven Wild Mysteries. One green, two colors, enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a 1-1 white human soldier creature token on the battlefield. So I think this is, one of, this is going to be one of the key green cards uh, for the clue deck. Um... And you know, if you've cast this early, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you investigate. Creatures are going to die during the game, right? Creatures are going to die. You're going to be able to investigate. And if you prolong the game, uh, you're going to be able to build up kind of a board of large one one or not not large one ones, but a large army of one ones. Um, I think you're always going to run this in your green decks, honestly, given you have enough creatures. If you have like a nine creature deck, sure, this is not as good, but even still, you might have enough uh, clue. Uh, ways to produce clues that you'd want to run this. I'm going to give this a 2.5. I think it's not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it is a little bit of a build around, sure, but it does some good work. Next up, we have Veteran Cathar. One green, one colorless for a 2 2 human soldier. Cathar. 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 Uh, you can play a white and three colorless. Target human gains double strike until end of turn. So, again, another bear with upside. There is definitely a human deck, and apparently it's going to be green white. Uh, also, there are a lot of green-white, like, clue-ish decks in the format. Uh, as far as bears are concerned, again, another decent one. Uh, probably on the same level as, like, the Quilled uh, Wolf. I think I gave that a 2.5, and I'm happy to give this one a 2.5 as well. Um, humans generally aren't the biggest, strongest, nastiest creatures, so giving them double strike is not going to be as uh, scary. But, hey, even giving a... 2-2 double strike is, you know, putting it in range of killing bigger creatures, and 4 damage is a huge, uh, huge number of damage. <laughs> How many times do you need to deal 4 to kill the opponent? Well, only 5 times if they have 20 life. Exactly. Uh, we're going to give it a 2.5 veteran Cathar. And our final green non-transform card, Weirding Wood. 1 green, 2 colors, Enchantment Aura, Enchant Land. When Weirding Wood enters the battlefield, investigate. Okay. Enchanted Land has tap, add two mana of any one color to your mana pool. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, I think this is actually just a solid a solid ramp spell. Because uh, Pseudo Cycles, if you cast this on turn four, you can already uh, sack the clue token to draw the card. So um, the fact that it replaces it is itself is really nice. I think this is like a 2.5, honestly. Uh, you're most likely going to always play this in your green deck, and, you know, maybe you have some clue synergies. This card does some decent stuff. That concludes the green cards. 
Uh, what do I have left? I have multicolored artificial.